Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday mountain weather update. Let's go to radar first and see what we've got. And just a tiny area of snow kind of moving through northern uh, Idaho in through Montana. And there's a bit of precipitation up in the extreme Pacific Northwest as well. But really, we're, we're just kind of waiting on the next big storm system uh, to move into the west. And, and it's and it's coming. I'll show you the, uh, the water vapor here in a second. Up in the northeast, not a lot here either. Um, there is rain and snow moving through Canada and a bit of snow in parts of uh, Maine. But I don't have anything major for the northeast. All right, water vapor satellite imagery here. So across the west, a couple of things to mention. Um, oranges and reds are going to be your drier air at low levels, your moistures in the whites and the blues. And there's a little cutoff area of low pressure right here, which is going to deliver rain and snow to Southern California. And then it's going to go all the way down through parts of uh, Arizona, New Mexico, and then slide out into the central part of the country. But it's going to kind of dissipate as it hits Arizona, New Mexico. There's a little bit of moisture with it, but not a lot. But this storm system will set the stage. It will open the door. Look how big this is. Big area of low pressure here and another one behind it. It will set the stage and open the door for these two areas of low pressure. And um, all the while, we will also set up a pretty rich flow into the Pacific Northwest and parts of British Columbia um, as all of this is cycling through. So the next storm cycle comes in around 312, 313, all the way through probably 319 across the west with a lot of what you see here moving into place in fact here are my bullet points so mainly you've got that little area of cutoff that cutoff low pressure moving into southern california but aside from that there are two other big storm systems 312 13 14 15 and then a storm system for 317 18 and 19 for a lot of the west the west coast into the inner mountain west and like i said sort of in between all of that there's going to be this rich flow for the Pacific Northwest and BC, which will basically fire in two different waves of heavy precip, heavy snow between 312 and 316. So I'll cover all that in this forecast. Here's my snow timeline, best odds of snow. Um, for Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So for example, in Big Sky, you can see the first major storm system coming in 313 through the morning of 314. And then a light shot 315 followed by uh, another potentially heavy shot with that second big storm around 318. In the Wasatch, pretty similar timing. Tetons, pretty similar timing. Colorado, also very similar, where you're getting two main storm systems. Um, in the Wasatch, 313 to the morning of 314 and then 318 another heavy shot. You can see that happening in the Tetons, Colorado. Now, interior BC in the Pacific Northwest. You've got some heavy precip in the Pacific Northwest, 311, 12, 13, and then again, 315 and 316. Pretty similar for interior BC. Um, Tahoe's going to get nailed. I'll show you what I'm thinking for that. You've got two major storm systems, potentially three different pushes of moisture, waves, um, so looking really good in the northeast. I just don't have anything big. All right, drilling down here. This is Alta, Utah. Forecast mediagram at about 9,000 feet. So this forecast model says it's high and dry today with a temperature, a max temp of 35. So a pretty high freezing level. Very little wind. Most of the 12th is dry. Very late. Uh, some precip, precip starts to move in. And it pretty much snows all of the 13th and into the 14th. And it does look heavy. This model generates about 18 inches of snow out of that, uh, that time frame. And, and, and you, it would be snowing through the 14th. So the likely amount would be closer to 20 to 24 out of this wave. And the wind definitely picks up looking at 40 to 50 mile an hour winds late on the 12th into the 13th and the also the 14th. Temperatures slide a little bit, 31 on the 12th, down to 25 with good snow production on the 13th, and actually the temperatures fall through the afternoon and evening hours. Okay, so that is um, Alta, Utah. Let me take you up to Jenny Lake, Wyoming. So we'll get a perspective here of the Tetons and Jackson Hole Ski Area. This is effective about 86, 8,700 feet. And 
it's high and dry uh, today, the 11th. Max temp at 32. Uh, winds are pretty consistent, 25 to 30. Most of the 12th is dry. Snow comes in late, snows on the 13th, and kind of trickles into the 14th. This model generates 6 to 8 inches of accumulation. And the winds move up to about 25, 30, 35, 40 miles per hour at the height of that, uh, that storm. Uh, max temps uh, tomorrow at 31, and then Thursday they start to cool into the 20s and definitely fall through the afternoon and evening hours. Okay, let's look at the jet stream forecast. So you're looking at a current, the current of high winds up at about 30,000 feet in the atmosphere. We'll start this at uh, this early today, Tuesday, March 11th. And I'm looking for the, the brighter colors here, the oranges, the reds, the tans. That's going to represent your higher wind speeds up at jet stream level. And a couple things to point out. So you can see the dip in the jet, that white area, the opening there over Southern California. That's that little cutoff low. It will not have an impact at all across most of the Intermountain West. It will slide through rather uneventfully, except if you live in Southern California. And probably parts of Nevada, you're going to get clipped by that. And there may be a little bit of precip that survives into Arizona, but then it dries up. Okay, so then there it is. It slides through. Here we are. Early to midday on Wednesday, March the 12th. Here comes the, the big storm cycle. So this is early on Thursday, March 13th. Big area of low pressure hitting the West Coast from the Pacific Northwest all the way down to California with big time snow. Then that moves in. You can see the dip and it slides into Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, uh, Northern Arizona, parts of Northern New Mexico into early Friday, March 14th. A little bit of a tilt on that. That becomes a severe weather producer out into the heartland and potentially with blizzard conditions through the Dakotas. High winds with this storm system on Friday, pretty universal across Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Kansas, the Dakotas, very high winds and severe weather out in the heartland. Okay, let's move ahead. Here we are. This is late on Friday the 14th. Another little storm system behind that storm kind of rides in on its coattails, keeps the snow going into the 14th and 15th. Um, here is early on Saturday the 15th. Pretty broad trough with this thing, right in the heart of the country. Okay, then that moves away. Here is, uh, this is probably lunchtime on Sunday the 16th. Here comes our next storm system. Here's late on the 17th. There's early on the 18th, um, dipping the jet, sliding through California, Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and into Colorado. Look at that right there. And there may be another little air, a little kink in the uh, atmosphere right behind it up in the Pacific Northwest. This is early on the 19th. And then, yeah, there is indeed even another storm system right there coming down. Uh, this is going to be early on Thursday, March 20th. So this pattern keeps delivering. Okay, snow accumulation over time. So on this forecast, the light blues are going to be your lightest accumulations, generally under 3 inches. Greens are 3 to 6. Yellow is 6 plus. Red's 10 plus. So we'll start this early today, Tuesday, March 11th. Most of the snow is up in the northern tier. You can, almost, you can see the, uh, the evidence of that little cutoff moving through Arizona. There's a little bit of snow there. This is early Wednesday, March 12th. All right, here comes our big storm hitting California pretty squarely here. This is early on Thursday, March 13th, with a lot of snow there. I mean, we're looking at feet of accumulation in the Sierra. Snow develops. Uh, you got snow in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Idaho moving into Utah, Wyoming, and eventually building into Colorado. This is early on Friday, March 14th right here. Then that storm moves out into the plains. There's another little storm that kind of rides in behind it. This is early on Saturday, March 15th. And then there's that rich flow up in the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington State, and uh, BC. And then here comes the next storm system. This is early on Monday, March 17th. That moves into the interior. Utah, Nevada, Wyoming, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico. Um, this is early on Wednesday, March 19th. And that actually sets up as a pretty significant snow for a lot of Colorado and Southeast Wyoming. That moves out, and then there's likely another little storm behind it sweeping through the interior. Okay, let's talk about snow amounts here. So this is all of today through the 17th. So this will take us all the way clean through the weekend. 
And keep in mind, there's another storm system for a lot of the Intermountain West right immediately on the other side of this forecast on, you know, potentially late 17 into 18 and 19. So it, this forecast doesn't even account for that storm system. This is just through 317. One to two feet for the Wasatch, a couple of feet Brian Head and uh, Arizona Snow Bowl up around Flagstaff. Potentially 10 to 20 inches up there in the Tetons. And really good snow for a lot of Montana, one to two feet of accumulation from Big Sky, Bridger Bowl, all the way up to Whitefish. And same goes for Idaho. I mean, two feet uh, right around that mark for a lot of Idaho. And uh, my numbers have gone up. They've definitely trended up for interior BC. I'm looking at 20 to 24 inches, essentially, for interior BC uh, because of those two pushes of rich moisture. And good overrun all the way down into Marmot Basin and Sunshine Village with a foot or more. Uh, the Pacific Northwest does extremely well from Baker all the way down to Stevens, Timberline, uh, Bachelor, Mount Ashland to Shasta. I mean, we're looking at feet of accumulation during this period. Good stuff for Tahoe all the way down to Mammoth, looking at over three feet of accumulation. Colorado, um, the bigger numbers of 8 to 16 inches are across the western slope in southwest Colorado. Less snow as you go east of Vail. Uh, lots of sixes through Summit County and up on the Continental Divide, Keystone, Loveland, A Basin, Winter Park, Eldora. Lots of sixes. Ten down there for Taos. Um, now, beyond this period, um, again, there's another storm system moving in. So keep in mind, all these numbers um, would be much bigger if I included the 18th and the 19th. Let's go to the northeast, and, and I really don't have much here. All the way through the 17th, two to four inches of accumulation. Essentially the same numbers as I was showing yesterday for upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and also Maine. I want to show you before I end here, I want to take you to my uh, Twitter account. I posted a couple of things up yesterday. I put a forecast up for the Sierra. Uh, you can see that right here. And this was a look at total snow through the 13th. Um, and there was definitely some big numbers here. Uh, generally one to two feet. In, in some places, potentially up to three feet. But generally one to two feet out of this first wave through the 13th. And keep in mind, there's additional snow beyond the 13th. That's why I had totals of close to you know three to four feet. But some pretty big numbers. And I, I tend to post these forecasts on my Twitter uh, from time to time. And I kind of move around the west uh, you know sometimes i'll show utah colorado i decided to do the sierra because everything's kind of starting right here um, but that runs through the 13th i also talked about the san juan mountains of colorado um, let me just show you this chart so this is your snow water equivalent for the southwest mountains of colorado including places like telluride purgatory silverton um, all those 14ers in the San Juans, all the way down to Wolf Creek Pass. This is a drier snow year, as expected, because of La Nina. The black line is where we are currently at 69% of average. Um, the yellow or this orange tan line, that was from 2019, and that was a gigantic year where we had massive avalanches and like 10 feet of snow in, in uh, 14 days in the San Juans. That would be pretty much the maximum. There's a huge difference. The green line is going to be your normal, and we're well below that. Um, and so I just gave a couple of stats on that. Just some interesting things. Um, so take a look at that on my Twitter, and I'll post some stuff up there today uh, as well. All right, guys, we'll end on the big western map here. Total snow through uh, 317. We're looking good, um, and, and some places are looking at feet of total accumulation. Thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day, guys.